How about integrating nature into your daily routine to find that elusive work-life balance? Today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. And now your host, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome everyone to the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where together we align, connect, and prosper. You can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. This is episode 295. And if you want more resources for, you know, work-life balance, go over to our website, go to that drop-down list and more. Go to the WBNL resource page and we have a plethora of stuff over there for you. If you're listening on um, iTunes or any of your, your uh, podcast platform, make sure you give us a little like and subscribe and, you know, maybe even write us a five-star review. That would be an awesome thing as well. And if you're watching on YouTube, come on, do all that same stuff. Um, you know, and, 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 you know, leave a comment down there. It'll help us out. Yeah. And we're going to talk about wandering. It's my favorite. It's my favorite thing. Be forever wandering, but not lost. And right. wandering Zen is really what I want to kind of focus on today. Right. That's a That's term right. that you used uh, way back when in 2015. Yeah. 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 Posting on the wandering, but not lost.com, which is really travel Matt's travel and, you know, I uh, blog, if you will, videos and so forth. Probably going to be yeah. doing some more things over on that page as well, right? That's right. All right. Um, but we want to talk a little bit today about just focusing on connecting with nature and how much that can help you. Some very, very simple ways. It doesn't have to be overwhelming here. But if you just take, if we can inspire you today to maybe incorporate some of these or one or two of these ideas into your life on a day base, then maybe you have a little bit more peace. Maybe you have, maybe it really helps you find that balance and you're not always working and you're not always stressed out and just all the overall benefits that we talked about in a couple episodes ago about uh, self-care, all the things that you can do for practices for self-care. Well, obviously one of them was in nature, but we've really been focusing Matt and I on this a lot. Yeah, yeah. And I find it to be one of the easiest, easiest ways to get present and to be in the moment. Uh, so I had I found a couple quotes. Thank you, ChatGPT. I asked her, you know, what are the most famous quotes about connecting with nature and the benefits of connecting with nature? And out of the five or so that I picked, Matt, which one? We're gonna put them all in the show notes. Which one appeals to you? I bet I know, but go ahead. You read one, I'll read one. The I rest of the I love. I really love them all. Honestly, I really do. This very first one from John Muir, I love. In every walk with nature, one receives far more than one seeks. And that is for damn sure. You know, and um, we got it. We might as well just say them. So I'll do the next yeah. one because Albert Einstein, I love that there's always some Albert Einstein quotes yeah. that relate that I can really resonate with. Look deep into nature and then you will understand everything better. Albert Einstein. And it's so true. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, it, I'm telling you, I'm getting kind of the chills when I read these things because they, they go right into my soul. I swear to God. Yeah. There's, here's the other John Muir quote. The clearest way into the universe is through the forest wilderness. Oh, You're nice. going to tell us about that here shortly because yeah. it just happened to you. And then how about Lao Tzu? Uh, nature does not hurry yet. Everything is accomplished. Yeah. Just think about that. That is wow. profound and so true. Right. Mm-hmm. And this last one by William Shakespeare, this is just, this is awesome. I've never heard this quote before, seen this quote before, and actually I really love it. The earth has music for those who listen. Yes. Wow. wow. Of course great? it does. Of course it does. And that's the power of it, just getting out. So let's just go through these. I think we have six or seven. Yeah. Uh, seven. Seven little ideas. Uh, and it starts with what we're doing on a daily basis that is really, you know, finally I'm in it now. I'm in the zone. Sure. And we get outside. And even if it's just for 10 minutes, like I did this morning, taking a daily walk. Okay. So just incorporate daily walks. Now, whether you have an hour today or five minutes or 10 minutes, just getting outside out of wherever it is you live or work and doing that uh, is, is powerful. And you could also maybe even do that uh, on a lunch break if, if you couldn't do it in the morning because you got to get the kids ready and, and all of that. Short walks can really help you get connected to nature, appreciate it. Matt and I were talking about how recently how, you know, instead of being focused on, I would love to be able to be living, this is me speaking, I would love to be able to be living in my perfect world where I'm really more closer to more natural settings and not concrete jungle condo development. However, 
you can find the natural beauty anywhere you are. And I live in the desert, but when I'm out taking my walks, sometimes I will go to a park. Sometimes I don't have the time for that, or I don't make the time for that. And I just get the walk in and Matt, I know you do the same thing because I've been to your place where we take the walks and similar, it makes me think of you walking and the, the beauty that you have in, in Southern California is different than what I have. But however, I have been noticing these jacaranda trees, which are, are in full bloom, these bushes, with these beautiful purple blooms on them. And I started to notice them about a week or two ago. And now, and I just literally had a day and this happened to me maybe a week or so ago. I had a day where it was like, how come I didn't really see these? as much as the day before all of a sudden i saw them and i saw them everywhere and i hadn't noticed they were all over my complex my condo area and i still now i'm laughing at it because i took pictures of them i put them in my little map my walk and shared it and i was like look at how beautiful this tree is look at how beautiful and vibrant the purples are and it was like it was i was seeing it for the first time right yeah and that happens to me now when I'm out. And it might just be noticing a hummingbird or a butterfly going by. And in, in that moment, I'm not in my head thinking about the 20 things on my list. I'm actually present, which is what I think we all struggle with in a very big way. We're constantly, because of just so much technology and all the devices, we're never in the moment unless you really focus on it. Even when you're taking a walk, if you're thinking about all the things that you need to do, then you're not being present. So that's what we're encouraging you to do. Take a mindful walk. Right. You know, take a walking meditation. Stop thinking about everything that you need to do for five minutes and, and notice. Right. Anything to add to that? Well, just when you're out walking, the, the great thing about if you do walk, if you like a, walk a normal course or if you have your, your routine or your route, it, it it can't ever get boring because it changes throughout the year. It is constantly changing, no matter where you live. Even if you're in a place that doesn't technically have seasons like Vegas or California per se, or people think, but of course they do, right? Plants and trees change. Those jacaranda trees don't bloom all year round, right? Yeah. So there's going to be, yeah, there's going to be 10 months or nine months of the year where there's not going to be a bloom around, right? So when they c comes back, they're going to be like, oh, the purple's back. I mean, it's it's pretty yeah. cool. And you, that, that's those are the things, the details you need to notice as opposed to I'm just walking right yeah it's great it's great exercise it's good for your body right it's good for your health but also mm -hmm. when you start noticing and appreciating and reflecting and really enjoying the stuff around you is when it starts becoming great for your mind yeah and then if, if you just go about your day looking for the ways to appreciate i mean nature can be the easiest way to bring you into the present moment i'll give you another example for me and i will have moments where i'm almost brought to tears yeah recently if i'm driving or something and i happen to catch an amazing sky or sunset or sunrises i think we have in vegas some of the coolest sunsets and sunrises comparable to yet different than beaches Florida, you know Florida, like on Florida, the west yeah, coast yeah, or yeah. even on the east coast those are beautiful too in their in their own way but because of we're surrounded by mountains and foothills and and uh, if there are clouds in the sky, we have some of the most amazing skies sometimes. And it can just take your breath away, right? I totally so, agree with you. Uh, so it's little things like that. I mean, you don't have to go out all the way out and drive somewhere to do it. You can find it if you're looking. So that's just number one. Take a, a daily walk or get outside. Take your breaks outside. Maybe end your day that way and get out of being in, even though it's we're in a heat warning right now, it's fine was, you know, I could go outside, I'm showing homes, you just get into the shade. So I even if I'm out in the heat, I'm mindful of not, you know, getting overcome by the heat, by making sure I'm staying in the shade and so forth, but enjoying what's happening out there. So the next one is exercise outdoors. So besides just your walk for exercise, maybe you're doing a little bit more cardio or whatever and get out of the gym or the treadmill, get outside and do that. Get out, go take your practice for yoga or whatever in a park. Or find some green in your area and go do that. Who cares what people might... And at first I was like, I was doing a meditation just out in my front area where people are walking their dogs and I was starting to be like, okay, well, are people going to think it's weird? And I'm like, does it matter? I mean, it's okay if they do. I just need to be in the moment and not be worried. What is somebody thinking because they see me, you know, just sitting there. And so I've been doing a little of that as well, right? So, um, all right, how about this one? Take your work-related meetings and maybe tasks outside if you can Brilliant. when you can Brilliant. matt and i have done this before when we were working together in a corporate world and 
you know, can you just go out and we do it with WBNL coaching when we're together, yeah, we let's go somewhere and have a working meeting, but let's go somewhere, enjoy being outside. And, and honestly, what we find is what we've taken hikes and we've come up with ideas and your mind is just slowed down and open to inspiration, right? Yep. Remember some of the, t uh, the trips that we've taken where we've walked and just gone on hikes and we're brainstorming things we're going to do for WBNL hey, coaching. WBNL coaching was, was uh, really found oh, created, wow. created out in the wilderness. So absolutely. Exactly. Right. So can you just figure that out? These are just easy ways to integrate that. You're not always getting up out of your home, walking outside to get to your car, driving in your car, always being in the, uh, what do I have to do today? Or worrying about whatever you're worrying about, not being present. This is just how you can start to be a little bit more mindful. How about this one? Bring nature indoors. Yes. How about Love bringing that. into your workspace? And I, I really did a little of this this year too. Uh, I have house plants and just the ability to take care of them and get, you know, and just even talk to them or whatever you need to do. Like Matt knows I have crystals in my plants and, you know, and I'm like, are they, am I overwatering them? How am I doing with it? And it just enjoy being with that for a little bit. So there's, you know, even if you're not the best green thumb, maybe you can find something that's very hardy that you really, it's hard to kill <laughs> and you yep. can bring that in, but it really boosts your mood. And I really think it can make you you know, feel better because you have some of nature inside your house somehow. But you know what? It doesn't even have to be anything alive because I have a, a we have a lot of branches in our house, like our bathroom. We tree have branches, limbs and things. Yeah, yes. tree branches that are up, you know, and then throughout the different seasons, we might hang something a little different from the branches. Bringing rocks or shells into your house is huge. Right. Not only is it a rememberal, right, of maybe a vacation or a trip or a special place that you like to go to, but it also brings that can, it, nature is now in your house. I never will forget a while back when I first moved into a, an apartment years ago, years and years ago. Um, I had worked on the patio in the backyard. I had put this kind of like a rock, like little rock, little stones down in the backyard. And I thought, ah, that's cool. But so then I got those stones and there was a sliding glass door and I put the stones on the inside on the carpet to kind of match the outline. So it oh. looked literally like the sliding glass door was going through this little thing. Of oh, rock. that's cool. And it, that was like literally bringing the inside uh, yeah. to the outside. If you're, if you're designing your patio, don't push everything out to the outside. Bring some plants closer to your door because they will feel more like they're on the inside of your house and not yeah. just lined up around the outside of your, your terrace. So there's a lot of ways you can do it if you don't, either you can't bring uh, plants in. And one of the reasons we don't have a lot of plants because we have two cats and, you know, it's surprising how many plants are uh, poisonous to cats and plants. Uh, you yeah. know what I mean? So you could, there's a million ways you can do it to like, I can't buy my wife bouquets of flowers because there, there are no, but I still do. We put it in a vase right outside the sliding glass door. So when we're in the living room, they're right there, you know, but yeah. they're outside, you know? So there's a, there's, a, there's always a workaround guys. So just because, you know, just don't ever think you can't because you can. Great point. And when I think about your home, you do, you guys collect, like Laura will collect a rock or something from where you've been and there are oh strategic God. locations around your home. I have crystals that way, pine cones. Like I still have like something. Yeah. yeah so you're hundred percent right. There's a lot of ways to bring the nature inside, which just, you'd be surprised how that can just like really change your mood. Even uh, your artwork, even your artwork. If it's something yeah, you know, a scenic, great scenic point. Look or something. We have a decal in our bedroom of a big, huge cypress tree that's over our bed. Right. Yeah. So, you know, there's a thousand ways to do it to make yourself feel like you're more in. And I have a huge tree that's in my living room up, uh, that my sister gave me. It's a painting of a tree. Yeah. Right. See? Uh, I love that's it. Yeah. So there you go. Look, see all these fun ideas. It's just being, just being uh, mindful and, and being aware and being intentional, really. Right. All right. I love this one. Matt's got a story because he just, he's been dying to be able to get out and do this, but plan real nature getaways. So from time to time, can you take a day trip or a weekend and go somewhere where you really are submerged in a natural setting that's different than where you are now? And what happened to you? Where did you, what happened well, to you? We, we, you know, we love the Sierra Nevada mountains. We love it. Yosemite is our home park. If you want it, cause everyone's got their home park is our home park. Yosemite is a long way away for a day trip, but south of Yosemite is Sequoia National Park and Kings Canyon National Park. And, you know, they're 280 miles away from where we live, which is not like a, you know, just a Sunday drive, 
But uh, we did a day trip um, day before yesterday, drove up to Kings Canyon to meet you know some of our best friends who are camping up there, spend the day with them. So we left at four o'clock in the morning. We got up there at 10 o'clock and we had the best day. Jan talking about the sky. You drive up into the Sierra Nevada mountains and uh, the trees are there. And in this case, sequoia trees and that big, beautiful sky and the clouds and the air and the smell. And it's like, oh, my God, you're even if you didn't think you were stressed out, you would feel yourself going. Oh, right. So incredibly beautiful. The Kings wow. River in Kings Canyon is to me one of those beautiful rivers I have ever seen just because of its magnitude and force that it has, especially this time of the year during the snow melt. So it was just so recharging and rejuvenating. And it was, it, you know, we, you know, we used to do these all the time. And for a lot of reasons, we've, we've kind of stopped doing them as frequently. And we made a commitment when we were coming home on that trip the other day that we were absolutely going to start doing like, my wife's a school teacher. Today's her last day of school. We're going to be doing it this summer. We're going to be getting out a heck of a lot more, kind of like we used to, because you get out of out of the habit. But I'm going to tell you, the best part, not the best part, but a, a great part of any sort of road trip is the actual journey itself. Mm -hmm. You know, we, the state of California, you know, I'm biased because I'm a California boy, but it is a, it is a beautiful state. All states are beautiful, right? But it feels like to me, you can't go anywhere where you're not being able to find some sort of beauty. And, and maybe I can, I look a little more than other people. Like we drove into the central Valley and I know I've heard people talk about the central Valley of California being so boring. Well, that, mm -hmm. that, to me, is like the farthest thing <laughs> that could ever be. It's like, it is the, it is it's a bread basket practically of the freaking world. People, mm -hmm. California has 43 million acres of farmland, right? It's the, it, pro it produces, um, it's the fifth largest agricultural and produce product uh, producer in the world. It, it, you know, it's amazing. It's the largest produce producing state in the United States. I mean, it's just incredible. And, and when you're driving through this time of year, like the corn is starting to grow. So you're seeing like baby fields of corn out there and mm -hmm. the olives and the, and the, um, and the grapes and the citrus trees. I mean, it's just incredible. So there's so much to see on the way. So don't always just try to get where you're going. Enjoy the journey because it really is part of the thing. So, and, you gotta, you know, and that's stopping and being in the present moment, not like mm -hmm. a, when are we going to get there? Yeah, what around you 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 go to Sequoia, and we went to King's Canyon. We didn't go to Sequoia this time, but there's mm -hmm. a place called Lemon Cove as you go into Sequoia. And if you catch That's that right time of the year when the, the trees are blooming, you need to you you cannot drive through there. You have got to stop and just even if you don't get out of the car, just roll down the window and smell that citrus smell. It wow. is un. It, well, you know what it makes you realize that if you get a a can of any sort of or you know any sort of um, <laughs> spray or you know scented you know oils or whatever. That's not lemon. <laughs> not when you smell the real essence of a, of yeah. a lemon uh, bloom. So anyway, I'm telling you, I am still on fire from this trip two days ago. I woke up and we were out. I mean, literally, it was like an 18 hour day and, and it's almost 600 miles of driving. Most people would think they, a lot of people don't drive 600 miles in a year. So, mm -hmm. so, so we were tired yesterday morning when we woke up, but boy, I was on fire and I feel exactly the same way today. See that just because you went and had that intense experience. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Ride it. Ride that experience until the next one and find yeah, little ones in between. Right. Yep. Keep yep. it going. We had a couple last couple ideas here for you. Gardening. Right. I just live in a, I have a tiny patio, two bedroom condo. I'm doing some herbs, uh, you know, and you can, it's kind of interesting to think like if I, I would do more, if I could do more just with my schedule and so forth. But there are some really cool things that you can do to even grow vegetables and some of those cool new contraptions, you know, sure. that are out there where hydroponics, I guess is what that's I was it. Thinking. That's yep, it. Hydroponics. So there's all, there's no excuse, right? You could even do that inside and have it all lit and whatnot. So gardening is kind of a neat idea. You and you guys have you have a front and a back patio, and it's totally yeah. And I, I'm telling you, it doesn't even have to be uh, agricultural kind of plants. I mean, it can just be just be, you know plants. Yeah. You know, I mean, just vines. You, know, you got, you got your grapevine, don't you? Have, oh yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm so proud of my going. backyard vines. <laughs> I, I, you know, my I you know I call it my vineyard, but it's really just three grape. <laughs> three great uh, plants but they're, so, they're beautiful and i have them growing up a trellis and and the uh, grapes are i can see the little baby grapes on there already you know it's early in the year but it's that's awesome it's, it's, it is awesome and and here's right. another thing. 
if you're in an area that you know has hummingbirds or or butterflies, uh, you know plant plants that are that are yep. going to attract those to your yard. Lantana, so, so. lantana is hardy everywhere, and that is a, the best butterfly attractor. That's By the what way, I'm let me, with. I have to digress for just one second. We're already over our time that we are trying to hit, mm -hmm. but let me just tell you one more story. We're down in Kings well, Canyon. We're excited about river. nature. What can we say? Well, we are. Uh, we were down in Kings Canyon by the river, and we looked out the car like, what are all those bugs? Oh my God! It's like you could see it. It was like a swarm. The locust. The car. <laughs> it was ladybugs. Oh. oh my God! We were in this swarm of ladybugs, and I'm telling you, if there's not anything more lucky than that when they start landing on you. Well, now I would is, love that. It is amazing. I have a, a short video. I'll send it to you, Jan, um, and wow. I'll post it online too. That you know, it's really. A, I was taking a video of the river, but if you watch closely, you'll see all this activity. So really, watch when you're watching the video, and all those little things are flying or ladybugs flying. Wow, what were they amazing. doing? Like, I know I only see ladybugs solo. I never seen no, them no. swarm. We used to go to a cabin every year, like during the summertime, and we had a place called Ladybug Meadow. That was our name. It wasn't officially named that, but the, the <laughs> trees would just be lined with ladybugs. I think it's like the hatching season, right? Where the oh, new ladybugs. Wow. Are and they're just out flying around, probably getting their wings dry or whatever, however that works. I don't really know, but I would assume something like that. <laughs> it's interesting. You didn't tell me about ladybugs. That's awesome. Oh. All right. Well, hummingbirds and butterflies, all that stuff is just amazing. Just the birds. It's so, like even wherever yeah. you are, if you've got a tree or a bush, you got birds. Okay. And you, yeah. you're, you, you hear, if you stop and listen, you, you'll hear. In fact, I was talking to my sister while I was walking the other day. She happened to call and she's like, I hear the birds. I'm like, what? You can hear the birds cool. through the phone? Like, yeah, where, where are you? I'm hearing the birds. I was like, wow, that's cool because I know I love them too. Uh, last, last idea we have for is engage in outdoor hobbies, right? So do you do things like photography? Is that your hobby? You know, maybe you're not even aware that if you're outside and you're, or maybe you take something up like this that gets you outside. Uh, that, you know, bird watching. One of my other sisters is totally into bird watching or she joined a group where they would take walks and they were the audubon society was checking routes on sundays and so she would be out walking and they were doing things to try to figure out how to stop the birds from hitting the buildings in jacksonville um so there's all kinds of things that you can do that would make you get outside whether that's just because you like to hike and you collect national park stickers <laughs> or stamps or yeah. whatever it is, but yeah. maybe being mindful about what is, what is a hobby that you could take up that could get you out in nature. So these were just, a, a, you know, six or seven things, seven things in particular that we talked about today that it's not hard to integrate it. It just becomes a choice. And if people are saying, cause I was one of those people and now I'm finding the time is I don't have enough time to go do that or to take care of myself. And I'll, I'll get there later when I finish this project. Well, what if, you know, there is no later, all you have is the moment and the next moment after it. And then the next moment after that. So why not take, why not make the best of it by integrating small ways that you can just uh, feel connected and grounded and have a little bit more work-life balance by just connecting with nature. And that was our topic today for you. That is really good stuff. And if you want more information about that, we'll put it, we'll put a link to the uh, Wandering Minute Lost website over there too, you, where you can get a lot of wanderings in. We've got a lot of little short snippets of things that you can go over and look. We're going to be adding more of that coming up over at our show notes at wvnlpodcast.com. This was episode 295. Don't forget folks, we're running a June special for our real estate team builder course. Uh, go over there and enter coupon code RATV24 through the month of June. That's until 11.59 on the 30th of June. Uh, you can, is that June? 30 days has to turn, but yeah, 30, yes. 30th of June, you can uh, get that discount, $100 off. So go check that out for sure. And um, we're going to leave you today with the podcast. When I was down in Kings Canyon, I uh, it was just beautiful. We were some of the only people down there in the canyon because it had just opened up recently. And I took a three minute video of the Kings Rivers. We're driving along, just had my hand hanging out the window. Um, it's a long video, you know, but go listen, go watch 10 seconds of it. Go watch 15 seconds of it. Go watch, go watch a minute of it. Or if you really, really want some Zen, go watch the whole three minutes of that video because you, to see the power of that river, to hear that water, right? And then to see just no one else out there except for us. Um, it's pretty amazing. So that's going to be the end of the video here. Go check that out if you want to. And until next week, uh, everyone, you know, get up and get out, right, Jan O'Brien? Get up and get out. And be wandering, wandering, <laughs> but not uh, You were setting me up for that. Sorry, I missed <laughs> you. Sorry about that. <laughs> See you next week. Bye-bye.